Okay, with only 10 days left before the start of the exam uh, for this semester in fluid dynamics, I would like to go through a few tips and some advice about how to survive uh, the exam. Uh, this is advice only, this is not policy. All my explanations with respect to the content of the exam and the rules for how it's graded are in a separate video which I published a few months ago. This is just my advice, my general tips about how to survive the event itself, the, the actual happening of the, of the exam. Uh, so let's see what there is in there. A lot of people have the misconception that the exam is something very dangerous, very tricky, where you are asked to be extremely intelligent and creative. And I hope this is not true. I hope to make the exam something that's uh, very predictable and something you can work towards, uh, prepare towards. Actually, I hope that as you go through the whole uh, chap chapters, the whole program of the Fluid Dynamics course, the, that every time you work on a problem, you are practicing towards uh, the exam. Um, so let's see what there is um, specifically. Before the exam, um, my advice is, as usual, is during the semester, write things down in a way that you will understand later. It's not about finding the solution immediately now. It's about making it very clear in the last few days before the exam, what went right and what went wrong uh, during your solution. So during your, your solving of the problem. So don't hesitate to highlight uh, the problems and take notes to yourself uh, to explain how not to do things uh, because this helps in the last few days before the exam. Um, use scientific notation. Um, especially in your calculator. Uh, this um, Reading this uh, on the display of your calculator, this number up here, and then retranscribing this as that uh, is a very expensive error because you miss uh, just one digit in there. I think it is the nine, which is there. It's not present. And so you end up with a number that's uh, factor 10 off. Yeah, you're wrong by factor 10. If you use scientific notation, then you will be reading this and you may retranscribe that and again, skip uh, one digit in there. Uh, but you will be off by a very, very small amount, oh, actually not a noticeable amount. Um, so use scientific notation and practice um, playing with it and working with it. It will definitely help. Um, as you know, you can download the past papers for the past few years. Um, but there is a but, there is a however. So let's see which one of uh, the following is true. Uh, is it that A, you have to watch an annoying, an annoying video advertising every time you want to download a paper? Or is it that to download papers, you have to like every one of my videos and subscribe to my channel? Or is it uh, that there are deliberate errors in the answers? Or is it, yet again, uh, that once you have seen the solution, you cannot unsee it? The true answer is D. <laughs> so beware of this, that skipping too quickly uh, towards the solution of the exercises um, prevents you from facing what you will face during the exam, which is this anguish and this um, deep thinking about what kind of equations do I need to use? Uh, do I need to pull out of the equation sheet to be able to crack this problem? Um, so make sure you keep a couple of exams at least um, for late revision, um, where you have not read the text and not read the answer, and you try to practice with it to see how quickly you can find the answers. Uh, stay healthy, um, sleep enough, uh, as much as your body is asking for, uh, eat sensibly, uh, instant noodles and energy drinks are not good for you on a long-term basis, uh, get some sunlight, all of those things, uh, believe it or not. Uh, affect your result in the fluid mechanics exam. They contribute to how how well you will do. So be reasonable with this. Uh, plan for the worst. Uh, hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Um, you're not invincible. You are like seven other billion people on this planet. You're human and you make mistakes and you fail sometimes. Um, it's okay to fail an exam. It's okay to fail two exams. It's okay to fail many exams, okay? Uh, and despite what I've been trying to convince you uh, about in the last uh, semester, fluid dynamics is not the most important thing in the world. Uh, so if you don't make it through this exam, uh, don't punish yourself and keep going. Uh, you will make it as a happy human on this planet, nevertheless. On the day of the exam itself, um, checklist should be some idea, a calculator that works, 
check that you know how your calculator works. You don't want to be finding out how to convert radians uh, uh, to degrees in the middle of the exam. You want to be familiar with it, so practice with it before. Uh, bring something to write, uh, bring a face mask too. Uh, you may consider bringing water, discrete food, discrete being very um, silent food, food you can eat very silently, so not a big pack of crisps, uh, but something like a banana uh, would be fine. Um, I use highlighters a lot. I highlight uh, my way through exam papers uh, in different colors to try to highlight what the data is, what the questions are, and I check things off as I get uh, through the exam, whatever works for you. Make yourself a checklist so that on the day of the exam, when you're stressed, you don't forget anything. Um, for the first honor this year, there will be no question answered uh, during the exam. This is because we're split in several rooms. Um, I can only be in one room, so I don't want to be unfair to the group, uh, to the other group by answering questions in one room and not in the other. So no questions whatsoever will be answered during the exam. Um, if you have doubts, take your best guess, your best educated guess at the answer and move ahead. Um, an unpleasant part of this presentation is talking about cheating. And it's really like uh, this parent to teenager talk about sex education. Uh, you don't want to hear it. I don't want to go through it. Uh, but still, it's good for both of us uh, to talk about this. So let's go about this. I'm really sorry uh, I have to talk about this, uh, but we have to do it. Uh, usually most talks about cheating uh, during exams are about ethics and morality and blah, blah, blah. And um, I don't want to go through that. I'm not really interested. Um, my personal opinion uh, is that I really don't care. Couldn't care less if you cheat. Um, there is enough happening in the world right now about which I'm unhappy, things that I'm worried about, so that somebody cheating on my exam in fluid mechanics and getting away with it is very, very, very low in the list of priorities. Um, however, <laughs> however, um, there are other students in the room and many students lose motivation uh, when they see that others cheat and get away with it. And I believe these students are wrong. <laughs> they should not lose motivation. But nevertheless, they do. And it's a huge amount of work to build up motivation of students to work towards an exam um, and to actually enjoy fluid mechanics. And I don't want this to be broken down by some people cheating during an exam. So it is my responsibility, my professional responsibility, to do everything I can to prevent cheating. And this means um, it's a pretty tense atmosphere in the exam room. Um, and if you get caught with things, uh, things sentences like, oh, but I just forgot my phone was on, on in my pocket. Uh, oh, I did. I have those notes hidden under my paper, uh, but I didn't even use them uh, or I forgot about them. Uh, none of this will get you uh, any sympathy. If you are caught cheating, you will be yanked out of the exam room and um, you, the result will be written in your examination records. And you may be thinking, so what, you know, I just fail one exam, I can just try again next time. Um, but the academic record of the university, it cannot be erased. It's there forever, and you carry that with you forever. Um, and this may not be meaningful today. Uh, I totally understand that. Um, grades are just grades. They're not the most important thing in the world. Uh, but you have to think that a really, really embarrassing Facebook photo, you know, that photo that was published online by somebody else where you... You just wish this photo would not be there. Uh, but you cannot have it erased from the internet. It's just there. Uh, this is better. This is a lot better uh, than a bad academic record. Um, because maybe in 10 years, you will be applying um, for something. You'll only be trying to get elected to a local election, to the board of a company. Uh, your academic record will show up uh, in 10 years. And so you don't want anything bad in there. Uh, certainly my academic record uh, had to show up uh, when I applied for a job 13 years after I graduated. And my academic record is not great, but I'm glad there's nothing bad in there uh, because you just cannot improve it. Once it's out there, it's finished. And so uh, my advice uh, is um, if you're going to fail the exam, if you're really insecure, if you're really stressed about the exam, um, uh, fail it. Yeah, Go through it and fail. Uh, and that's okay. It's fine. Uh, it's totally cool. Uh, to fail exams and try again. 
Um, and I don't really mind what you do personally, but professionally, my advice is uh, do not mess around with a university. You're going to lose at this game. Uh, so if anybody you know um, is about to cheat uh, or is thinking about cheating on the exam, talk to them and point them to this video because um, friends don't let friends uh, have bad academic records uh, to carry with them their whole lives. So sorry again about the section. I know it's infantilizing and it's unpleasant to be watching. Uh, it's very uncomfortable for me to be recording, uh, but uh, it's important nevertheless. Okay, so um, you're sitting in the exam and you're going through the content of the paper. Um, how to handle this? Uh, the first problem is worth 10%. It's mandatory. And here it is. Um, the question has leaked already. It is right there, no, right here on the side of the screen. So write out the Navier-Stokes equation in three Cartesian coordinates. What I would like you to write uh, is nothing more and nothing less than this, which we have seen in class and which I've talked about in chapter six. There are many videos about this. Uh, go through them slowly, practice, and pr practice writing this. Um, it's all you're being asked, not to demonstrate it, not to prove anything, not to find a solution of that, just write it out and you get five points. And the other five points, are writing out uh, the incompressible continuity equation uh, in three Cartesian coordinates, which is nothing more and nothing less than that, or um, specifying in which conditions either one of those two equations is used. And the conditions are for Navier-Stokes, uh, all incompressible flows of Newtonian fluids. And for the incompressible continuity equation, so that one here, um, all incompressible flows, uh, all fluids. It works all the time. In my experience, there are two kinds of students uh, with respect to that first question. Uh, the students who are intelligent enough to think, huh, it's kind of boring and it's not very pleasant, but I will nevertheless work towards this and I will get 10 points for free on the exam. And then there are students who are too intelligent uh, to go through this. And they're like, of course, I know the Navier-Stokes equation. This is insulting. I want to be solving real problems. I don't want to be learning stuff by heart. Um, and guess who among those two groups of students ends up in the 20% of students who were last year failed to take advantage of 10% for free at the start of the exam. So think wisely and practice with this. It's worth it. On the day uh, where all of the students uh, answer this question successfully at the start of the exam, I will remove this question from the start, uh, but so far it hasn't happened. So take advantage of that. Okay, you are past the first 10%, you are left with choosing three problems um, and you choose three that are worth each 30 points. Uh, time yourself, uh, give yourself 30 minutes for each. Uh, no more, 35 minutes if you want, but nothing more. Uh, do not spend all your time on one exercise, it doesn't pay. Yeah. Um, do the easy things first. That's a very important principle in going through exams. Um, the order in which the problems are printed is not the order that suits you best. And I'm still amazed year after year by how many students just choose to go through problems one after the other in the order that they're given instead of the order that's best for them. Uh, so figure out which exercises you're gonna solve and pick the easy things first. Secure points for you uh, before you keep going through the exam. If it doesn't pay, don't do it. Measure the number of points that's attributed to each question and choose wisely how much time you want to spend on this and exactly what is asked of you. Um, if it's nice to have, it's really cool, it's beautiful illustration, it's a long, cool, well-expanded explanation and there are no points associated with this, you will not get points extra. So do not do it. Save your time, save your energy for other questions in the exam. Um, tips for the exam. Uh, this is the pile of exams from a few years back. Uh, there were only 90 papers um, at the time. This year, there will be about 120, 130 papers. Um, this is, all of it has to be read and graded by me. This is a very unpleasant, very long process. Um, so think that you are graded by a human. Grading is difficult, it's very tedious, but I have to keep a very high level as I do it. Um, I want you to succeed. I'm not there to try to remove points. I want to give you points. I want to, you to pass um, and have success in your life. Um, I have no interest in tipping the balance either way. I'm not trying to have an average of so-and-so. Uh, I'm not trying to fail a certain percentage of students. However, I am 
accountable for grades. Uh, and so I'm accountable towards uh, other students. I'm accountable towards students in the past years. I'm accountable towards my colleagues um, that pass means pass. And that's pass means this student has proven on that paper uh, that they know well enough uh, how to solve this problem uh, to pass. And so I do not take into account how motivated you are, how friendly you are, um, and how well explained uh, the problem is after the exam when you come to me and discuss it. I only consider what's on the anonymous paper that's in front of me. Uh, help me help you. If you have a wrong answer, um, then I will try to give you points, as many points as I reasonably can. Uh, and for this, I need a clear answer. Uh, let me show you what a very unclear answer. This is horrible to go through. If the result at the very bottom right of this paper is wrong, um, then it's very hard for me to find out what went wrong um, and how, to, how many points to give on this paper. Um, this is another calculation that's very difficult to go through. If this result here is wrong, um, then it's very hard to identify for me what went wrong in there in this whole series of calculations. So I can pinpoint it and give points even though the result is wrong. Um, make sure your results are very clearly readable. Uh, do not include extra vague characters in front or behind your result. Make sure the unit is readable. Uh, do not have me guess or try to make educated guesses as to what the result is uh, because I will not do that. If either it's very clear and legible or I will just dump it and neglect it uh, because you're engineers and your result must be 100% clear. Um, make sure you double check that your results are physically meaningful. Uh, if you're calculating the velocity in the pipe and it comes out as 800 thousand meters per second uh, make sure in some way in your mind there is something that goes on oh, that's 800 kilometers per hour uh, no yeah 800 kilometers per hour this per second 800 kilometers per second 3,000 kilometers per hour um, if you don't have time to fix this and you sense something is wrong at least at least on the side of the paper uh, write too high or very fast so that I can see you're an engineer and you are trying to make sense out of things and write physically doable things and not um, blindly follow what comes out of your calculator. Uh, this is a very easy paper to grade. Uh, if the result at the bottom is wrong, uh, then it's easy for me to go through the whole page here and identify where exactly the problem was uh, to fix this and to give as many points as possible uh, for that. So try to write something like this. Use a lot of paper, it's for free. Uh, paper is free, uh, ecologically negligible impact. Uh, so. Use as much space as you can as you go through the exam. They are too big, they're too small. Um, keep in mind that I'm older than you are, so uh, write large. Uh, circle the answers so they're easy to find. I don't want to have to go to, to go through your whole paper. I just want to see that's the right answer with the right, uh, the right unit. Give you four points and not even have to read what's before. Number the exercises you're doing clearly. Uh, for me, it makes my job easier. It also makes your job easier. Cross them out on your paper as you go through them. Make sure you don't forget answers. Um, be graceful with mistakes. Don't smear your mistakes. Uh, cross over just once uh, and move on. It's totally fine to make errors and to fix them. Um, do not go screaming in circles, ah, this is horrible, and then smear the results all over. Uh, unstick yourself when you're stuck. Um, yeah, it's uncomfortable. You don't know how to solve this problem. Um, keep your cool, and if it doesn't work, then move on to the next question and do your best on the next question. Uh, do not panic and do not spend 15 minutes uh, on a single five-point question. It's not worth it. Uh, basically treat the exam as being a shooting game. Um, one of those very relaxing shooting games where there are evil monsters in a big room and you have a gun and your job is to shoot monsters. The monsters are the exam exercises. Uh, what do you do? Um, you only shoot one monster at once. You don't spray bullets all over the place. You choose one monster and you shoot it down, okay? Um, you don't empathize with the monster. You don't feel, oh, maybe this monster have little monster children who are gonna be lonely at home. Um, you just shoot the monster and you finish it. You don't figure out the monster. You don't 
start the monster and think, ah, oh, this is this is interesting. Let me figure out, oh, this, I've never seen this before. This is interesting. Let me try to figure out uh, this problem. You just shoot the monster, okay? And uh, once the monster is dead, uh, you don't you don't kind of poke the monster and think, <laughs> try to see it, it try to play with it. If it's dead, it's dead. Uh, don't take selfies with it. You just move on to the next monster. Okay. So these principles of shooting monsters in a game very well apply to my exam. Uh, so do the same. Finally, after the exam, um, after the exam, please don't email me uh, before the results are published asking for your grades. Um, the results will be published very soon. I'm doing my very best uh, to grade the papers quickly and efficiently so that you get your grade as quickly as possible. I'm doing my best, I promise. Uh, I cannot answer um, 150 emails of different people who are asking for their grades. I will publish the grades online. Uh, they will be treated by the examination office and you will receive them through the online system of the university. Um, always use your academic email to communicate with me. I do not talk about your grade with joe123 at gmail.com. Um, so be careful with this and um, do not write long incendiary emails to me or my boss explaining I'm a complete idiot um, or incompetent evil person um, who just didn't give you the points you deserved before you have read your paper. So read the paper first and then complain. Uh, it will save a lot of energy, embarrassment and time uh, on every side. And so what's behind um, this course? What is beyond? Um, I think I have talked about this already. Uh, beyond this course, uh, if you succeed well and do well in this exam, uh, you are allowed to attend the Computational Fluid Dynamics course, uh, which is the best course ever, um, taught by one of the best teachers of university, Professor Gabor Yaniga. And in there, you will learn how to uh, use computers to solve Navier-Stokes equations, or at least um, approximate versions of those equations. Uh, to compute flows uh, in two and three dimensions and do a lot uh, more interesting things that we have done so far. Um, and so if you want, if you liked fluid mechanics uh, and you want to do some more, uh, then doing well in this exam is what it's all about. So take the computational fluid dynamics course with Gabor Yeniga, uh, apply for a HEV with us. The first question that will be asked is how well did you do in this exam? Um, do your master's project with us. Um, the LSS Laboratory, Lehrstuhl für Stromesmechanik und Stromestechnik, uh, is where the cool things happen. So I hope to see you there after the exam. Uh, take care. I'm with you and have a good productive session and see you soon.